special songs because we have a lot of activities this afternoon uh, I just want to uh, take this opportunity to greet our visitors Amen Amen. We have got visitors from Mozambique Amen Praise the Lord We just want to ask them if they can stand on their feet uh, this wonderful morning Amen Precious visitors from Mozambique Hallelujah Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may take your seats. Amen. Um, we also have got visitors from Zimbabwe. Uh, if we can ask them to stand on their feet so we can recognize them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, uh, the visitors from Zimbabwe is the Jan family which is also uh, connected to uh, the men of the moment uh, hallelujah praise the Lord brother Wooten amen so you know we want to treat them very special today we want to sing a wonderful song that we are all going to dance and welcome them but before we do that let me introduce you our precious brother here is also brother Johnny uh, and his wife Amen. Uh, Brother Johnny married in the same house with Pastor Dakwa. Amen. So they are brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Brother Dakwa is, is almost a part of this church. He's always here. He's loved dearly. Amen. So he's the elder brother to Brother Wooten. Amen. Praise God. The rest of the family, I'm sure. 
we will just want to recognize them by their names. Amen. Because it's, we won't have them all the time. So my precious brother here, his brother, Adelino. Brother Adelino. He came with his wife also. Brother and uh, brother Adelino and his wife. He didn't even come with me. Okay. Brother Adelino is from Mozambique. Amen. And he's here with us. He came specially for the wedding of the two. And we want to recognize him. God bless you, my precious brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The minister brother. All right. We also have got Pastor Chingore uh, from Mozambique. We just want him to stand up and we specially greet him on his own with his wife. Amen. Sister Chingore, wherever you are, may you kindly stand up. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We are a blessed people this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We now also have Reverend John. Uh, he is known as sometimes Brother Tony. Brother Roy. So we also have got Pastor Johnny. We just want him to stand on his feet. Yes. And his wife also. Uh, Sister Johnny. God bless you. Amen. We welcome you and we love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, yesterday, Pastor Chikosi was telling us that um, uh, Pastor Johnny was the first convert. Uh, when they were crossing over with the gospel to Mozambique many years ago. And uh, Pastor Chikos used to travel from Mutare to Mozambique just to preach for two of them, uh, uh, Pastor Jani and his wife, until they had children, until there was a congregation. It's just a wonderful thing. Amen. Let's just give a clapping over to the Lord. Let's be the name of the Lord. Amen. So he is also the father of the Jani brothers. Amen. The one here and the one here. Let's be the name of the Lord. Let's just give a clapping offering to the Lord. Amen. We have our precious friend here. Uh, hallelujah. Brother He is a very popular man. This man that is sitting here. I just want to ask him if he can stand up and his wife. Amen. We just come, just come forward, sir. Just come forward together with the wife. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I won't give him the mic. Because if once I make that mistake, ah, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> So I was telling his wife that you married a dedicated minister, uh, an outreach person. He's, a, he's actually a missionary. Amen. A, a long timer. I know. An old timer. Amen. A very popular brothers in, a brother in South Africa. Amen. Praise God. He's also a very wonderful MC. Amen. And uh, he put some comedy inside. <laughs> so we want to thank God so much. Uh, our brother there uh, was in a wedding last year with his wife. And we went there and we really enjoyed ourselves. It was the top of the range. And we know brother Dan, but to the people who know his wife, ah, they said a lot of wonderful things. I was there when one after the other stood up in Mamilot and they were commending this sister for being a hard-working sister in the church and they had no few words to speak about her and uh, we are so grateful. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we saw it yesterday for what she was doing at the wedding. Let's just give this a... Hallelujah. Amen. So when we are going to sing for Brother Wooto and the wife, we are also going to ask them to come into the... And we also sing for them. Because when, when they came, I was not here. 
So if they had come whilst I was here, I was going to, you know, receive them that way. God bless you richly. Amen. For now, you can take your seats. The, the song is coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our precious friend is here. Pastor Manza. Amen. His first name is Wilson. Hallelujah. Wilson Manza. From Zambia, Mtendere, Rusaka. Amen. So if you pass by the coast of Zambia, we have a pastor. If you pass by Mozambique, we actually have two pastors here. If you go the other side of Pumula, we have another pastor sitting there. Amen. So you won't get lost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Pastor Mans, some do not know you. Can you just stand up? Especially those from Mozambique, they have never seen you. Can you stand up, Pastor? Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Having wonderful times uh, with them. Amen. So now, whilst we prepare to sing, we just want to ask maybe two special songs. We are just going to plan how we are going to sing whilst these two special songs will be uh, for us today. Amen. Just two. So, you know, I did not, I just, it was like, I was just picking Lotto, so it fell on Sister Chabuka and uh, Sister Kawutsu. Amen. So if you have missed it today, don't you worry, it's a special day. Just enjoy yourself. God bless you. Let's give a clapping offer to the Lord.
Ari mundundani wonga Yesu. Amen. To introduce to you a very new family. Amen. Hallelujah. The couple of the moment. Today, we just want to ask if Brother Wooten and Sister Rebecca Jani. Amen. The, the same names have changed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Let's just give a clapping offering to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Love knows no nation. Amen. Amen. Brother Johnny is a Zimbabwean Mozambican. Amen. And Sister uh, Rebecca is a Tuana pastor. Pure Tuana. Tuana, Tuana, Tuana. And you know, when, pa when Pastor Dan was here, he said the Tuana people, they are very uh, proud of themselves. Amen. But when it came now to marriage, uh, they were humbled. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we just want to ask if Brother uh, 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 Wooten can come and stand here in front, uh, side by side with his wife, Sister Rebecca. Amen. Bless be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to, we just want to uh, appreciate the young man who was raised uh, in between Mozambique and Zimbabwe, various pastors, and he has lived to the expectation of the message of the hour. God married according to the word of God, together with also sister who was raised just here in Soweto, which Soweto is very popular in the whole world but it can still produce the best. Amen. As long as they have found the word of God, they will, it will produce the best. Amen. Amen. How many are proud of the message of the hour? Ah, let's just give a clapping offering to the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So now today, we just want to give them a treat, a little bit of a treat, a Regent's Park treat. Amen. Um, I was telling Pastor Msoso, who is going to preach for us, that Pastor, we are a bit of a rowdy group, a noisy group, so you have to appreciate us in that manner. Amen. I know there are some groups where you go, where people are very quiet and very humble. We appreciate them. They are our brothers and sisters. Amen. No offense at all. When we go there, we will also do the same. We will be quiet. Amen. But when they come here, they must appreciate also our being noisy. So I was wondering. We, we want them to stand like this too. We also have boys. We want them to stand like this brother here someday. When they have done good, let's appreciate them. Amen. Let's rejoice with them. Let's be happy with them. Amen. So, what should we sing them? Ahia, ahia, oh, ahia, ahia, oh, ahia, 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 oh, Jesus, I cannot, Jesus, I cannot, Jesus, I cannot. My sister, keep us Jesus, I cannot. Jesus, I cannot. Jesus, I cannot. Oh, Jesus, you are winning. Jesus, you are winning. Jesus, you are winning. Oh, Jesus, I cannot. Jesus, I cannot. Jesus, I cannot. Another clapping off, the Lord. You know, in the message, 
In the message, we don't play with the demons. We put them under our feet for the glory of the kingdom of God. So, Sifunukunyatelama demon here. Amen. How many are ready? Sizova nyatela matimoni. Oh yeah yeah. Oh sizova nyatela matimoni. Oh hey 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 when I tina. Sizova nyatela matimoni. Oh hey 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 when I tina. I'm not hearing you, I'm not hearing you. Hey, when I did not, 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 hey, when I did Hallelujah. No man, no 
Stop! 
We are all happy to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe we can take our seats. Hey, we have danced there. Yeah? Hallelujah. We are still, it's, a, it's an extension of the meetings. So just be at home. I didn't recognize our precious sister here. Sister Nyamayaro. Sister Nyamayaro, you can stand on your feet. We just want to recognize you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. No one in the house must feel uncomfortable and well and welcomed. Amen. Amen. So we are so thankful. We just want to ask if the song leader can sing us uh, one more song. Amen. A very soft one. Today, it's a wonderful day. We realize that uh, Pastor John is here. You might never be here again. So we asked him just to greet us. But you know, ministers, they don't greet with uh, hallelujah like they are song leaders or, or they are going to give a special song. No, they don't do that. Ministers, they come and greet like ministers. Amen. So the brother will sing us a song, then I will introduce our precious Pastor Johnny, give us a real short one. Amen. Then we also are blessed to have uh, Pastor Msoso. Uh, you know, during the days in Zimbabwe, when uh, uh, I think, uh, don't laugh, I, I, I'm not trying to make a funny, but I'm trying to make you understand how I feel. Amen. They, we had two vice presidents there was Joshua Kabukonkomo and there was also uh, Mzenda. Amen. Dr. Simon Mzenda. Hallelujah. So um, when Dr. When, when, when Dr. Joshua Nkomo wa, died, when people were talking about him, they were calling him Nyongolo. Amen. So they were making fun of the president who was there. And they were saying, Mr. Mzenda was telling the people that I am the only Nyongolo that is remaining now. Amen. So, Pastor Msoso is one of the four pastors in, in Mtar. Amen. Pastor Kabaira, Pastor Dakwa, Pastor Garande, uh, Pastor Msoso. Amen. So, the three of them, this Nyongolo, three Nyongolo, they had preached for us. But there was one Nyongolo which was remaining. Amen. So today, we managed to catch him there. And we said, ah, Pastor, you are the only Nyongolo that is remaining. So we must bring you to preach for us. Amen. So that all the four corners of Mtare are touched. Amen. So we are so grateful. He is the one who is going to preach for us. But so long, we just want to ask if the song leader can give us one song as I'm going to pick him from the uh, 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 room so that he can minister for us. God bless you. Amen. 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 I hope we're still happy. Amen. I have heard how Christians long ago they were brought before a tyrant's throne they were told that he would spare their life if they would renounce the name of Christ one by one they chose to die the son of God they would not deny like a great angel why I see I can all
If I switch on to Portuguese, you don't get what you understand it anymore. Amen. I'm saying God bless you all. So I want you to sit just a minute. Can you sit down just a minute? First of all, I want to thank God to be here. Uh, I knew brother Okay, I may not know your name, but God knows your name. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm really happy to be among you, and it's always good to be among the people who eat from the same food. Amen. Uh, the sister sang very well. She sang in, in Chewa, but as I said, when they were in the upper room, they could speak any other language they could understand. Would you mind if I ask my beautiful lady to be here? And then we'll, we'll sing. You see, uh, we remove coming and join me. It's just to, to show you that when they were in the upper room, when the word speech fell, they could speak any language and they would understand. Amen. 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 Mother, you start that song in Wirimo, okay? Wirimo, hmm? Warato. That's what I want to sing. You start. Hmm? Uh, the song is the same song that the sister sang. So it says, Wirimo, Warato. Ni Yesu wirimo warato wirimo warato Ni Yesu wirimo warato wirimo warato Ni Yesu wirimo warato Oh, 
as well. So his presence here means a lot. This could not happen while he was absent. He had made all the effort to come all the way from Zimbabwe to see the graduation of his son. I call it graduation because it has been good. Amen. So, God bless you, Rishi, brother Mso's. Many others came. And also the brother came to support, which is good. And I'm also grateful to to the pastor, uh, I mean, not Brother Daniel, thank you so much and also for letting your girl to go. And that's the word of God. Amen. So I appreciate that one. Benvindu Rebecca home. <laughs> so I said I'll be speaking Portuguese, English, I don't know, but you understand me. So welcome, Rebecca, we receive you. Uh, I saw the pastor was saying, let's dance around here. Yeah, we have been singing some songs. I want to invite somebody, just two minutes to sing the song. And I know most of you will join. Do you know Ebenezer? Come and help me. She became my daughter and the, my friend as well. And I'm looking forward for another friend and the daughter. Okay. Do you know Ebenezer? And you can join us as well. Amen. You start. Hmm? Okay, you start. Okay. I'm dedicating I'm dedicating this song to Brother Wood and Rebecca. Amen. 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 All right, God bless you. Amen. Amen. It's a shona song. Ebenezer. Amen. Dino ti ebeneza Nesuo ti kunyasha Oi kozwa irema Shishi wata Asi jeho Watshiza pandu Yesu Dino ti ebeneza Nesuo ti kunyasha
sister, Tete, Nyamayar. Let me tell you something very special, Tete Nyamayar. These boys, they were born in Mozambique. And one day, because of education, they went to Zimbabwe. So even Wooden was very young, maybe four years, and the brothers were really elder. But really God knows. Sometimes you meet some, somebody and you may not accept. You meet a brother, you meet a sister, you meet mother, and sometimes you, you do not accept. But they came all along a sister to me, and he was taking care of these people. When they were in Zimbabwe, they, couldn't, they knew no one else. But because she was a, our sister, God-given sister, get me very God-given sister, and I'm very proud of her. She could take the kids during the holidays to Rewa around the Arari so that they could know. And this one, they knew no one else in there. They were there, but our sister could take care of them. Sister, can you stand up again? But above all, there is also people who do care. Pastor Chungori was also taking care of our son. And I know Pastor Chungori would say, Follow me as I follow the Lord. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So it is always good to have people like that. Brother Chungore, I really thank you so much. Uh, I was saying something outside. Uh, Brother Vusi, uh, that's right? Eh? Maliamba, okay. Brother Tapiwa, okay. That's a gift. It's a gift. So Brother Tapiwa was saying, uh, I was telling him, Brother Tapiwa, I knew you before I could see you. He said, how come? This young man has spoken a lot about you. So you can know somebody before you could see him. But today, I'm seeing him for the first time. But I've known him some time ago. Amen. So another applause of hands to Brother Mariamba. And your wife as well, we include you because the Bible says you are one. Amen. Now, can I kindly ask you all to be standing? I'm, I'm a slow speaker, so bear with me. Amen. Amen. I would want to ask him, they said our brother Wood is, is a preacher and also Maybe I can't ask my brother Daniel to pray before I open the scriptures. Nous sommes vraiment très contents cette matin, Seigneur, pour venir au devant toi. Amen. Venir, Seigneur, apparaît avec Pasteur Jani, parce que nous voudrons attendre ta voix, Seigneur, et ta voix et ta parole. Viens parmi nous, Seigneur, maintenant. Dans le nom de Jésus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. I would want to ask you to open with me Genesis 1. I will read verse 1 and verse 11. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now, verse 11 reads, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb, yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself I want to repeat here whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so I want you to mark the word or this small portion whose seed is in itself I would also want to open where we are standing Luke 8 verse 11 Luke 8, verse 11. Uh, verse 11 reads, Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. You may be seated. God bless his word. Okay. Before I go further, I would also want to read John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1 reads, mm, 
In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the, and the word was God. Up to verse 4, the same, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What expression? Now, listen to, to verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. But also on this one, mark the word, in him was life. Amen. Amen. Now, coming to my subject, I just want to talk, I want to remind you the Easter holiday, holidays. Yes. How was your Easter holidays? Yes. Did you enjoy them? Amen. If you did, amen. 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 I can see people raising up their hands, they are saying they enjoyed Easter holidays. Yes. What was Easter holidays and what was the meaning? Yes. If you go back to Genesis, he said, whose seed is in itself. And Luke 8, verse 11 said, and the seed is the word of God. Now, if you are coming back to John 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So, uh, Easter holidays, you said you enjoyed. In other words, you enjoyed the death of Christ. Is that right? Do you agree with that? Somebody dying and you enjoy. Amen. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Easter meant one dying and you're enjoying. Amen. Okay, let me make it very simple. Uh, do you know a pumpkin? Yes. I'm not bringing a pumpkin, but yesterday, because of these two, we had uh, some pumpkin, a uh, pumpkin mesh. Yes. In Nashona, we say no pee. Yes. Even though it had no uh, no, but I will call it no pee. Yes. I enjoyed it yesterday. Ah, <laughs> and I see the sisters there even salivating just because I said no pee. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> now, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and it was God. Now, verse 14 says, in him was life. Who? The very same word. And he is the creator of everything. Nothing was made that was made. Isn't it so? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Now, I'm talking of a pumpkin right now. Yeah. If you are holding a pumpkin, you are holding a body. Yeah. Hmm? This yeah. body pumpkin, yeah. there is life in it. Yeah. But now for you to enjoy it, yeah. what happens? Yeah. You have to break it. Right. Yeah. Breaking it, yeah. it's a way of being cruel. Yeah. It's a way of killing it. But because there is life in it, yeah. get me very well. Yeah. When you take a knife and cut the pumpkin, yeah. in other words, you are becoming cruel. Yeah. And if it is not cut, then the seeds will not bring forth another life. Because it says in it, yeah. there is life. Yeah. So if you are watching a, a cucumber, yeah. you should know it's a body. Yeah. And that body yeah. holds life. Yes. And those are the seeds. Now we are being told the word of God is a seed. So everything was created through the word of God. Amen. When he said, let there be animals, they were there. When he said, let there be a human being, a human being was there. So in other words, God was a body of himself. Within him, there was life. Amen. So this God, everything was within him, and that was all life. If you want to read Genesis, it will say every seed would bring forth its own kind. Yes. So, whenever you are holding a mango, you don't just keep it. Yes. You have to break it. Yes. And breaking the mango, you either use your teeth yes. or a knife, but there is a reason. It's because within the mango, there is life. Yes. Because you, you get the seed, and that seed, for it to grow, you need to break the, the mango. You need to bite the mango. Yes. Likewise, Christ, the same thing happened. Because if Christ wouldn't die, you wouldn't be here. He was only going to be Christ. Amen. So whenever you are watching a fruit, you should see something that it's a body, but within this body there is life. Amen. So Christ was really supposed to, to die. And if he wouldn't, we were not going to be here. Amen. 
Now listen. Uh, on verse 3 it says, all that was made was made by him. Yes. And nothing was there before. So in other words, God, within God, there were lots of seeds. There were uh, animals, fish, and all what he did. Him being a bird. Now, to express what was within him, he was supposed to sow the seed. That's why the word of God is a seed. So by saying, let be so, and that was so. Amen. So coming back to verse, uh, Luke 8, verse 11, it said, the word of God is the seed. So do you believe me? Or do you believe that? Right. Now here, yeah. all things were made by him. Without him was nothing, anything that was made. So in other words, we are saying, God himself had all the life of all the living beings. But for them to be physical, he was supposed to sow them, expressing to the word of which the word is God and which is the seed. So whenever God expressed, he was sowing a seed. You became to an existence because he said, let be there men and you were there. And he said, now, if the seeds are there, we don't need to be... Can I find a, um, a scripture that will help me that, on that one? Yeah. I want to go to Isaiah 53. I think that was the first song which was sung here Amen. this morning. Uh, oh, sorry, but... Okay, I'm using this tablet, but it's... Uh, I want to read Isaiah 53. Maybe I have a physical Bible, but it's opening... Mm, sorry, I'm waiting for my tablet to open. Yeah, but I want to read Isaiah 53, verse 1 to 11. Yeah, it is starting slowly. We accept. But if there's any Bible, I'll read. Okay. Now, I'm almost there. Isaiah 53, that's what I want to read. Okay. Isaiah 53 reads, verse 1, Who yet believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, verse 2 reads, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. How can something grow in the plant? It means it should be a seed. A seed should be sown. Right? So, this body holds seeds. Or this body holds life. And it continued to say, and the root out of the dry ground, he had no form, com comeliness, and when, he, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You see, if you are holding a pumpkin or watermelon, you know, you start smiling at it, but you don't keep it, you have to break it. Yes. And that means you could not desire on it. Yes. So if you don't break it, then you won't enjoy it. Yes. If Christ wouldn't die, read him. There were no Christian. Yes. All of you wouldn't be here. So here it says, uh, there is no beauty that we should desire in him. In other words, we are supposed to break it. Yeah. So you are holding a pumpkin, within it there is life. Yeah. So Christ was supposed to die for you to be here as a Christian. Yeah. Continuing, he says, he is despised and rejected of men. Just understand me. He is despised and rejected of men. So, if you are holding a pumpkin or a cucumber, what do you do? You break it. Yeah, you don't feel pity of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, it is despised, but to despise it, it means you are trying to, to see what's inside, which is the life. Yeah. So, yeah. the, the Bible continues to say, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised, and, he with, and we steamed in him not. Yes. No one would take care of the pumpkin if you're hungry. Amen. Yeah. You have to break it. Yeah. If you're holding a cucumber, you don't just say, okay, it's beautiful. You have yeah. to break it. And in other words, we are saying, you don't feel fit for it. Yes. So Christ going to, the, to Calvary, he was supposed to. Yes. But a good reason behind it. Yes. it yes. We were supposed to see the seeds or the life which was in Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. So... He had to go to, to Carver. And why? It is the man who did reject him. He didn't even feel pity of him. But there was a good reason for it. He was supposed to die 
or a seed has to be sown so that it will bring forth many other fruits. If you keep one seed, what will happen? It will be one seed. But if you sow it, then it will bring many more seeds. Now, Christ was sown, Christ was despised until to death. When he died, then we all became Christians. If it was not so, it was going to be Christ alone. So if you are holding a cucumber, don't feel pity about it. You break it. Because within it, there are some seeds. And those seeds will bring more cucumbers. So you are brought through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now here, he continued saying, I would like to read verse 5. But he was found for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. You see, so if he couldn't die, we could be all what we're supposed to be. But through him, we got all the benefits. Amen. So if you eat, if you're hungry, holding a mango, even if you don't have a knife, use your own teeth. Because there's life in it. And also remember, when you are walking along and you find a seed, a seed, don't worry about it. Don't argue whether it is a mango or or, or a cucumber. You saw it. Then it will bring forth of its kind. Amen. So here we are saying God's word is the seed. So if it is so, every body which is a fruit or a, a, a cucumber or a pumpkin, we have to break it. Don't feel pity of it. Some people, if you keep it, then you are saying you don't want other cucumbers. If you keep it, you don't want other pumpkins. So why are you holding an apple in your hands? Yeah. Eat it, because within it, there is life. life. And that life to be seen, we have to break it. Amen. And within Christ, there was life. Yes. If we, we could just, you know, he said, they hate him. Yeah. So hating him is the same thing, killing the, the victim, a cucumber, whatever you, it may be. But listen, uh, on verse 7, it continues to say, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. You see, some even sisters, they will get a big knife cutting the, the pumpkin because they want to eat it. Yeah. But there's one thing. Yes. As you cut it, there are some seeds. And there will be many more cucumbers. Yes. So God himself was a board full of seeds. Yes. He was a board full of seeds. But now you could express them through the word. Because we heard that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. Yes. So there is, and he, listen. While you cut the cucumber, the cucumber doesn't complain. Yeah. While you cut it, it easily breaks it off yeah. so that the seeds will be there. Listen, the Bible is saying, uh, so he opened not his mouth. The palm could never say, why cutting me? Yeah. And you do it cruelly. Yeah. Use the knife. and you, It's because it cannot say so because within it there is life and that's what you need. So please keep not... Even today, if I would ask that very same day when Christ was being uh, beaten or crucified, let me take you back all yeah. to the beginning. Yeah. When Christ was before the judge, yeah. he asked, yeah. whom would you release? A Barabbas or Jesus Christ? Yeah. If I would bring you all back, what answer would you say? Christ or Barabbas? Christ or Barabbas? You see, because if we have said Barabbas, Christ would have been released. Yeah. But now those guys they said, oh no, let's take Christ. Yeah. Because they were all, uh, because Christ was the gangster of all crimes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So if they have said Christ, surely there was not going to be a Christian on earth. Yeah. Amen. So everybody would have said Barabbas. I was also going to say Barabbas. Some people say, I would say Christ, you are a liar. Yeah. No one should say Christ here. Everybody would have said Barabbas. Now, let me say, on verse 11, he shall see of the trail of his soul, and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear the, their iniquities, iniquities. You see, he was happy to be bruised. He was happy to carry the cross. Amen. Even though it was uh, painful, but he could carry it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So carrying the cross, he was saying, 
you should be there. Because if we, you wouldn't have done that, none of us would be here as Christians. So, we are so thankful that there was one who could bear the cross for us. Yes. And for you to be here, it means it was only Christ who could have done that. Amen. So, if you are hungry and you keep the pumpkin, you will be hungry always. You will die. So, break the, the, the pumpkin. Break the, the, the lemon. Break the orange. Don't keep it. Yeah, some people are holding, even Christ said, if you keep it, it will be so. Yeah. So you have to sow it or you have to break it. Yes. And some people are keeping the lemon, you know what is going to happen? It will rot. Yes. And if it rots, then you are killing the seed within it. Yes. So let's break the lemon. Amen. Now, can I just read verse uh, of this chapter? I want to read, the, I want to read with verse 3. He was despised and rejected of men. So, if he was despised in the death of men, it means Christ was really supposed to die for us. So, in in few words, I want to say, if you are at, if you really enjoyed the Easter holidays, you are saying you also enjoyed the death of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Ah. Now, uh, if we are what we are today and we believe it, let me just read a, a quotation from the prophet. Maybe it will help us as well. Let the Holy Spirit come upon any person that truly got something down there. A healing comes from the inside. Amen. Amen. So, the healing, the healing comes from inside. I think you all know Piripiri. You know Piripiri? Yes. Piripiri strength is within it. Amen. You can be holding Piripiri in your hands, and you won't, if you want to break it, you won't feel the bitterness of Piripiri. Amen. So, if you want to enjoy Piripiri, you have to break it. Amen. Amen. So, sometimes people, they say, ah, okay, if you leave two kids in, in your house and there's Piripiri and tomato on the table, if you hear him crying, it means he broke the Piripiri. So, you don't need to explain why is the kid crying. It's because he has broke the Piripiri. So, we are saying here, it's within. So, the strength of Jesus Christ was within. So, the, the life is within. So, the seeds... That's the life. So they are within. So we have to break the body. God he himself was a body and he broke himself and said, let there be. And all the beings were made. Yes. Amen. So with this illustration, I want to end saying, if the Easter holiday was wet, we are saying it was wet Christ to die. Okay. Also, a simple question before I finish. Uh, I think many people live in this big city, Jobek, isn't it? Yes. A man should be led by the word of God. Yes. If you obey the word of God, then you won't get lost. Amen. Is that right? Yes. How many of you have seen uh, a blind man who is being led with a kid who was struck by a vehicle raised up again in Jobek? If any one of you has seen a blind man led by a, a small boy, was struck by a vehicle, raised up your hand. I think there's, but why? Men like me, with eyes, as I can see, they've been struck many. Yes. They could be our friends or our, our relatives, that right? Yes. Why was it so? Yes. Because we use our eyes to see. Yes. But now, a blind man can see. Yes. Brother Rui, we are saying, John, you are saying a blind man can see. How can he see? A blind man sees through the voice. Yeah. Because that little girl or a boy who is leading him, you say, now stop here. He does stop. Now let's go. He goes. Yeah. He obeys completely to the person who is leading you. Yeah. So if we can come down yeah. and obey the word yeah. completely, yeah. we won't go wrong. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's true. We go wrong because we are using our physical eyes. But if you use the word, you won't go wrong. That's why that old man comes to a place and you will be taught, oh, they didn't hold on. He comes to a place, okay, let's go. He doesn't say no, he doesn't tell the kid, he obeys the leader. So there is one wonderful leader among us. That's the word. And this word is God in the form of letters. Amen. So if you want not to get lost, obey the word. Where there are troubles, you go back to the word. When you can't do it, go back to the word. So Jesus was 
one who could always go back to the world. He obeyed death so that he could, you could be there. Amen. So, you know, it's not easy when we, we, we crack the pumpkin. It, it obeys. It doesn't it say no. It obeys because there is life within it. So, if you are being led by the word, you obey the leader. So, I'm saying, let's all go back and obey the word. If we can do that, we won't get lost. Amen. May God bless you as we wait for Brother Mosos to come because I'm here just to greet you and I want to say may God bless you for listening. As we have listened, I will say my remarks will be don't lead yourself. Let the word of God lead you. Be humble as the blind man. The blind man doesn't give orders. And sometimes we give orders to, 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 uh, to, to the word. You don't do that. And let not the word, uh, don't try to say the word should comfort you or, or, or it should, the word should suit you. You suit in the word. Amen. Amen. So if you suit in the word, then there will be life. Amen. Outside the word, you are dead. Amen. So within the pumpkin, there is life in it. Is because the word of God is a seed. So let this seed be sown unto you. Amen. May God, may you have pleasure in the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Richard. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you too. Amen. God bless you. Can I have the mic given to the owners? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, it's in the pocket. Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my joy uh, this afternoon to be here in Jobek. In Zimbabwe, not Kujosa. Be happy to be here. It's my first time uh, coming to Jobek and to this assembly. And I take this chance to thank your pastors, which I greet. Uh, happy to see Pastor Mwanza from Zambia and the other pastors. Brother Mwandiamba, thank you very much. And the other pastors, thank you very much. Uh, the other pastor from Mozambique, Maputo, it's my first time meeting him as well. And uh, Pastor Rui, we've been uh, from far together. We want to thank you this morning. Maybe so that I won't wear you out. Can we read the scripture? That's in Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse number 7. We'll just pray. Our gracious and true heavenly Father, we thank you for your children that have gathered. Amen. Lord, we're not here to see each other, socialize, to see how smartly dressed we could be, but we hear that, Lord God Almighty, our souls will be brought closer to you Amen. on this Sunday morning. We thank you, Lord, for the work that's being done in this area. Lord, to bring up a bride for you and in other parts of this country. We thank you, Lord Jesus, even for the wedding yesterday. May you continue to bless this young couple and bless each one of us that as we fellowship around the word, may your spirit be close by. May you help me. I'm just a man. Help each one of us. God might be just looking up to you. That, Lord, if you're happy with us, you'll grace us with your presence, with your spirit, and may you touch one that might be not feeling well. May you encourage one that might be encouraged this morning. And may you also give us faith for the coming rapture. 
we bless your holy name, lifting up our hearts to you. As we read your word, may you bless us as we fellowship around that word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 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 From 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse number 7, the Bible says, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. May the Lord bless you as you take your seats. We're here largely because of the wedding, and I had... Uh, made up my mind not to come. That is true. He invited me way before. We have fished together, we have been together several times, but because of certain circumstances, I had made up my mind not to come. Brother Branham says, you children who have got parents that save Christ, I hope you just know what a privilege you have Amen. Amen. They lead you. They point you to Christ. He says, it's a wonderful privilege. Yes. So I'm saying, we have fished together, but I was not going to come. Yeah. I had made up my mind not to come. Yeah. But because of his dad, his father there, yeah. we have been far together. Yeah. He just sent me a text, yeah. an audio. Yeah. I thought about it. I couldn't send him a response. Yeah. Just trying to find out if I could change my mind. And eventually I did. Amen. 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 So, children, respect your parents. Love them. Do the best you can. Amen. And one of the best things that you can do yeah. is to be Amen. examples, just like what Don has done. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I haven't met Pastor Mandiamba. Oh, Pastor, I cannot even pronounce your, say, your surname. Uh, I haven't met him before. Chingore. Pastor Chingore? Oh, yes, Pastor Chingore, I can. The other pastor there. Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> uh, of course, Pastor Mwanza. But it's my joy to be here. You know what? It's not so easy just to turn to pick someone and say, come preach for me. It's not so easy. So I just want to thank you for that trust. Amen. And because we've been here for a while, you know, they say the economy is of scale. I traveled by bus coming over. Uh, I have a feeling of what it is to be sitting for too long a time. Amen. We left him at 10 arrived here around 5 a.m. in the morning. And my legs were swelling because it wasn't a short distance. So I wouldn't keep you too long or else you end up having your legs swelling here. Amen. <laughs> uh, my subject from what we have read is your work shall be rewarded. Amen. Your work shall be rewarded. And every one of us, from children to adults, we are here to fulfill obligations in life. Amen. You're going to school because you want a reward for your labors. You're going to work because you want a reward for your labors. Amen. you eating because you want to keep on living. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're serving God because there is a reward at the end. Yeah. Amen. So whatever you are doing, be it children or adults, uh -huh. your work shall be rewarded. Yeah. I would want you to just kind of remind your neighbor, just tell your neighbor, yeah. your work, your work, shall be rewarded. Amen. Whatever you are doing, you are not doing it for nothing. There is a reward at the end. Your sacrifices. Amen. There will be a reward at the end. It's a Sunday today. 
You could have spent that time doing other things. But you're here this morning. But you're not here in vain. Your labors are not in vain. One day God is going to reward you. Amen. Now, this life has got two divisions. We have got the other side. Amen. We're all hoping for that other side. But I don't know much about the life beyond the curtain of time. Apart from the things that we heard from the Bible or from Brother Branham. But this side of life, Christ one time was approached by Peter. It wasn't like a question, but it was just like a statement. He said, we have left our fathers and mothers. You know, for the cause of the gospel, what shall be done unto us? What shall we have? Yes. And he answered it correctly as a question. He did not just reply it as a statement. He said, no one who has left mother, father, brother, or sister, or even lands, friends, for the cause of the gospel. Amen. Shall not receive a hundredfold. I like what the Bible says. It says, in this life, in this life. And with persecutions. And in the life to come. Eternal life. Amen. So we cannot just sound the bell of eternal life. And live a life of suffering here. No. No. It means then our choices and priorities are wrong. If our choices are right. And our, priori our pri priorities are right. Yeah. It then means we should be rewarded here. Yeah. Amen. As a foretaste yeah. of the final reward yeah. that's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, in our country, Zimbabwe, yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. You know, because of the political space, yeah. a number of things are going wrong. I was saying, back home, yeah. there are so many scholar colors going on the roads. Yeah. A lot of potholes yeah. on the roads. Yeah. And you come to other countries. I know, yes, certain things might be going wrong here yeah. also. Yeah. But at least the beautiful cars on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Then if I would say, yeah. maybe I go to heaven because I drive, yeah. you, know, a, 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 you know, a poor car. How about those people that are in South Africa yeah. that are driving good cars? Yeah. And they, they, they're driving on good roads. Yeah. It means you cannot measure yeah. in our going to heaven yeah. by the living standards, earthly living standards. Yeah. No. And it then means that we should make the correct choices. Yes. 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 If you choose to be poor, yeah. it's your own choice. Yeah. There are people who are rich. Yes, there are people who are having it. And yet serving God. I have never been to America. The people there, the economies are well run. Amen. Well managed. And they are Christians. And how about you? In, in, in some corner somewhere. And you feel comfortable. Living an underprivileged life. It's your choices. But we want to thank God yeah. that Christ gave the disciples yeah. that promise. Yeah. Yeah, and one time, yeah. just to show that it's not just earthly things. Yeah. It's not just the earthly acquisitions. Yeah. Peter, John, and James yeah. were going to the temple to pray as they used to do all along. Yeah. They met a man whom they would always meet yeah. you know, as they would go yeah. to the temple to pray. Yeah. On this particular day, Peter said, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have. You know, I kind of like that hundredfold. Amen. That type of hundredfold. Amen. I kind of like that type of hundredfold. Where God is with me. 
He provides for me. He helps me. Amen. And he helps me to manifest Christ in my life, in your life. Amen. You may not have much, but never you fail to have that. That which Peter had. These are the people who were promised a hundredfold. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, which means whenever I want something, God is there for me. Give us this day our daily bread. Such type of riches I would want to get. Amen. I would want to get such type of riches. Amen. So, I think that kind of balance is it. I'm not saying don't have. You should. And when you do, don't put your heart on it. The Lord has blessed you. I don't want money in the millennium where they don't use currency. No. I would want it here. Amen. I would want healing here. Brother Branham says, what good is, you know, yourself crying for healing in the millennium when the Bible says there's no sickness, there's no sorrow, there's no pain. So deliverance is here. Healing is here. Joy is here. Amen. should get it on this side of life. And whatever Christ died for is benefits of redemption. Let us benefit from those benefits. Amen. Okay, I'll move on a little faster now. We're speaking on your work shall be rewarded. In Psalm uh, 103, verse number 10. The Bible says, He hath not dealt with us after our own sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Amen. And in another Psalm, the Bible says, If I would regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not even hear me. What is it that I'm saying? I'm only trying to raise up your faith. It's not only when you fast that God answers your prayer. You are a Christian because God loved you, not when you repented, but before the foundation of the world. And that was his care. He knew you before the foundation of this world. And because he has known you, he knew all about you and what you were going to perform on this earth. He cares for you. Amen. He cares for you. Brother Branham says, do you care for him? He cares for you. And like the pastor was saying here, yeah, his care led, for him, uh, led him to, to die for us, to die for our sins. So he, if he was to reward us according to our iniquities, no one would be rewarded. But we thank God that we have believed the message and it's our faith in the word. We may have mistakes. Confess if you have got a mistake. If you make a mistake, confess it. Then you move on. In Psalm 66, verse number 18. Okay, he says that. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. In verse number 19. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Verse number 20. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. In Proverbs 13, verse number 13, Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So rewards from Almighty God come as a result of obeying his commandments. You might go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 14. It talks about the blessings of obedience. You obey God's word, you'll be blessed. And verse number 14 talks about the cases. Now, because we've believed God's word, blessings follow that. Amen. Blessings follow that. Jeremiah 31, verse number 16. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice 
from weeping and thine eyes from tears for thy work shall be rewarded saith the Lord and they shall come again from the land of the enemy refrain in other words don't cry don't weep be encouraged take heart keep on moving on try again don't give up why your work your efforts your sacrifices shall be rewarded how many are looking for a reward everyone even myself too amen I'm going to read something here. We want to thank God for the message of the hour. Amen. If it wasn't of the message, we wouldn't have been here Amen. knowing the things that we know about Amen. Christ. Amen. We would have been here maybe, but not knowing the things that we know about Christ. Amen. Brother Bran, I'm talking about how we were born, how Moses was born, how every one of us is born. In the message, Why Cry, uh, paragraph 30, if you want to take the tape number, is 6307.14. M. Moses was born in this world and a gifted boy. He was born to be a prophet, a deliverer. He was born with the equipment Bond in him as every man that comes in the world is born with this equipment. As I firmly believe in the foreknowledge of God, the predestination. Amen. You are not just born just like an ordinary man. No. There is something that was blessed in you. There is something unique about you. There is something Amen. Peculiar about your life. You have a life different from the next man. Amen. You led a life until the time you came here that was different from others. And you only begin to understand why you went through certain things. It was because of that equipment, that uniqueness that God ordained for every believer to be here. It then means as you live this life, You won't lead your life the same way. You won't go through the same temptations. Even in marriages, their brothers sitting near to each other, you won't go through the same temptations. Each one has got a different package to carry. And as long as you are a believer, God will help you. That's our comfort. Amen. God is there prepared to help you. And not that God is willing that anyone should perish, but all might come to repentance. But being God, he had to know and does know the end from the beginning. If he doesn't, then he isn't infinite. And if he is not infinite, he isn't God. So he wasn't willing, certainly, that any should perish, knowing who would perish and who would not perish. That's the reason. The very purpose that Jesus came to the earth was to save those that God through foreknowledge seen that wanted to be saved. See, because the whole world was condemned. And I don't see how we could teach it any other way than the foreknowledge of God. And the Bible plainly says that he knows the end from the beginning. Amen. He knows the end from the beginning. Now, looking at our story on rewards, how God rewards our work. We go back to the Bible, look at our first example. I would like to pick, there are so many, I would like to pick Abraham. In Genesis 12, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. 
Verse number two, and I will make of thee a great nation and will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse number three, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. We know the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. His walk with God was considered to be a righteous walk. Even though he had his mistakes, he had plenty. Amen. He had plenty of mistakes, but his faith in great Jehovah, amen, made him a friend. A man on earth being a friend of great Jehovah. Amen. Amen. A man on earth being entrusted with blessings for the whole earth. Blessings for individuals. Blessings for nations. Amen. I won't say much on the nations. It might be misunderstood for something else. Amen. From a message forsaking all. Abraham had his challenges. And Brother Branham says, this man, Abraham, could have been a poor man, but he believed God left his country. Maybe he was not even a king in that country, but just an ordinary man. He left that country, an ordinary man. But look at Israel today. Amen. Look at Israel today. It's a blessing. It's a reward that was given to Abraham. From a message forsaking all, Okay, I've got it. Oh, read. This is Brother Branham commenting on Abraham. That message is uh, 620123. On paragraph 94 uh, to 98. Listen carefully to what Brother Branham says here. Ninety-four to ninety-eight, yeah. he says here. Let's take first the father of faith, Abraham. Yeah. Abraham forsook his own land, yeah. the property he owned, yeah. and everything else. He was called out of Chaldea, yeah. the city of A, er, and he forsook his land, yeah. his home, yeah. his people, and all, and followed God. Yeah. He had to forsake everything, leave it behind. We also have to forsake certain things. Amen. Amen. The Bible, the prophet is saying here, forsaking all. We have to forsake everything of the world and follow the message of the hour. Follow Christ. He forsook his land, his property, down in Chaldea, in A. He forsaken his property and God gave him the whole promised land. God pays back with a lot of interest. Amen. Amen. Maybe the Federal Reserve of South Africa uh, together with the Ministry of Finance in this land 
they gazette through different you know financial or monetary instruments how much banks can charge as you know a, a means of paying back on your investment the interest rates and all the like uh, in our land you no longer get interest on your money that is in the bank account there's no interest for it it's because of a run down economy but look at this economy. Amen. Look at God's economy. In the desert, he fed so many. Amen. Not only one year. No. But 40. 40 years. Until Nehemiah 9 reports that no one had his feet swollen. Or no one was malnourished. Their shoes did not wear out. Their clothes were not torn. For 40 years in a desert, there was no wool worth. Amen. I'm not sure if you've got the butter shoe company here, but in Zimbabwe we have. There was no butter shoe company in the desert. No one's shoes wore out. That same type of a God is the God that I'm standing for this morning. He can reward you. Amen. Where is your money going to come from? Yeah. Where mana came from? Yeah. Amen. Where mana came from? Yeah. How is he going to heal you? Yeah. How were people healed for 40 years? Yeah. How am I going to, to have a safe delivery? Yeah. Who were the special gynecologists in the desert? No. Were there any? Brother Branham speaks about Dr. Moses prescription. Yes. We have a Dr. Moses prescription. By his stripes. Isaiah 53. By his stripes. We were healed. If you are sick, that scripture is sufficient. It's a sufficient remedy. You can be healed on your own. God has made life easy for the believer. If you look at it in the desert, he raised up the brazen serpent yes. allowed Moses yes. to raise up a, a, a brazen serpent. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that anyone who was, you know, beaten by a snake, yes. if he had faith in his heart yes. and looked up to Jesus, yes. look and live, yes. that person was automatically going to be healed yes. without the presence of Moses and his team. Yes. Amen. Yes. Remember, Moses ended up having 70 or so men who worked with him because the work was too much for him. But if they were not around and you were beaten by a snake, if you looked up, if you looked up to the raised up pole, you'd be delivered. That's how easy God has made his help accessible to men. Amen. And coming up to the New Testament, there was the pool of Bethesda. If you were there, at a particular season, yeah. when the waters were stirred, yeah. amen, and you jump in, yeah. you will be delivered yeah. without anyone praying for you. Yeah. And right now, yeah. you can telephone glory, yeah. amen, yeah. without the pastor's help. Yeah. Not that you shouldn't get help from the pastor, no. But you have been made yeah. an independent being yeah. in terms of your commitment, your connection, with God. Amen. There is no dependence syndrome there. You are getting involved in an accident. You won't even have time to call the pastor or your deacon or any brother. But you can telephone glory. There and then. Lord help me. Amen. He will come on the scene of action to help you. Amen. That's how privileged we are. So this bank pays back with a lot of interest. God pays back with a lot of interest. He gave him up there that day when he met him. He said, rise up Abraham, look east, north, west, south. I give it all to you. It's all yours. That's the matter with Christians this morning. God gives to us but we are afraid to investigate 
investigate your land. In other words, explore the Christian land. Explore the promises of Calvary. Explore the benefits of redemption. Amen. Why are you in your condition? Why am I in my condition? Amen. Explore. Explore the land. Amen. Investigate the land. Find out. What else? You know, I don't like the type of Christianity. Where I just come to church, putting on a good jacket, good trousers, maybe a nice necktie, and that's all. Enough Christianity to make me a miserable citizen of South Africa or Zimbabwe. When the whole world is full, heaven is full, the earth is full. Amen. I said, why are you in your condition? And why am I in, in my condition? Are you not getting healed because God does not heal? No. Investigate. Explore the land. Find out what God can do more. Amen. Ask more. Don't ask. Brother Brown says, don't ask small things. When you ask God, Ask him big things. Amen. Big things. Said I'm ashamed of Christians who ask for a child's shoeless. Amen. Said can you imagine a rat in the granaries of Egypt that would come and say oh let me just eat one slice, one piece of rice because maybe I might run short. When you are in a granary of Egypt, remember Egypt was one of the strongest nations of that known world then. Amen. It was the granary of the whole world. And he goes on to say, look at a fish in the ocean. Saying, oh, maybe let me just drink so many milliliters of water because I might dry up the ocean. He actually says, nonsense. Yes. Look at God correctly. Yeah. Believe him correctly. Yeah. The benefits are yours. Yeah. Amen. 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 The benefits are yours. Which means we have to raise up our lives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Lift up our faith in the promises of God. Yeah. I have to do the same. Yeah. We are learning every day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So when you become a Christian, you are an heir to every promise in the Bible. That's right. Everything that God promised is yours. It's like a great big arcade. And by one spirit, we're all baptized into this arcade, which is Christ. If somebody gives me something, I'm going to look around and find out what I own. And I think that's what Christians ought to do tonight. Find out what we have got. If something gets you a little higher, in other words, if what you are expecting to get is a little beyond reach, a little higher up. Amen. He says, so that I can't reach it, I will get me a step ladder and climb up. Climb up Jacob's ladder. Amen. Climb up Jacob's ladder. So that you can get in touch with the promises. Yeah. Remember, there was this man, Zacchaeus. He was a short man. He wanted to see Christ. And he climbed up the sycamore tree. That's the effort. He was unable. But he thought he could do something. And many Christians are afraid to do something. Do something. Amen. Keep on believing. Keep on reaching out. Have faith in God. Brother Branham says, I'm sorry to say this, that a lot of people do not have faith. But they've got hope. One might say, brother, do you have faith? And not hope. Yes, I have. And good news, you also have faith. But we do not know what we have. And we do not know who we are. We want our faith to grow. 
We want our realization to grow. The more you realize who you are, the greater the faith that you begin to manifest. We are sons and daughters of God. We are not just the common people, the ordinary people. No. God knew all about you before the foundation of the world. And he blessed his life in you. He blessed his life in you. The Holy Spirit. It's Zoe, the life of God. It then means we have got his potentials. Amen. Sisters, you've got his potentials. Amen. You have got his potentials. Children, you have got his potentials. And even adults, every brother, every sister, we have got his potentials. John 14, 12. The works that I do, shall you, not anyone else, you, shall you do also. Because I go to the Father. In other words, I am leaving space for you. I am giving you a chance. What I have done in part, you can continue doing. Amen. Continue healing the sick. Continue preaching the word. Continue delivering the people. Amen. Continue manifesting Christ. And with your faith and my faith, we can achieve greater. You have the faith. Amen. You have the faith. There's a man in the Bible who said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Amen. We have to keep on believing. You have to keep on holding on. So it's not just the ladder. And if something seems a little out of reach in the Bible that God has promised, I'll stay on my knees and climb Jacob's ladder till I reach it. Because it's mine. God gave it to me. Amen. The Bible in James chapter 5 says, Is any among you happy? Let him sing psalms. Because you are happy. Amen. A song will just come out because you are happy. Is anyone in trouble? Says, Let him pray. If you're sick, call the elders of the church. They will anoint you with oil and pray for you. For the prayer of a righteous man, it availeth much. But I want to come back to this other statement. Where if you are in trouble, where the Bible says pray. Many people are too lazy to pray. It's your duty. The affliction is yours. The trouble is yours. It's not the pastor who is in that affliction. It's you. You can pray better. Amen. You can pray better because it's you suffering. But we don't do it that way. Pastor, pray for me. Deacon son, son, pray for me. Oh, man of God, pray for me. Haven't you got the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, watch and pray. Pray without ceasing. In other words, make your business, make prayer be your business. Let's be in the habit of praying. Whenever we are in trouble, let's go on our knees and pray. How would you understand then a situation where the Lord Jesus Christ, being the creator of the heavens and earth, after a campaign, he went, remained behind, went into a mountain to pray. And yet disciples, who have got the greatest need to pray, they sailed across. And this is how problems come. On the message, testimony on the sea, Brother Branham says, the devil got his chance there when he noticed that they were traveling alone without Christ. Amen. Pray. Pray. Just to remind your friend or your neighbor 
Pray. Pray. And they are not only just praying. You're not only just praying. It's praying until. You pray until you get the result. You want to be married? Amen. Pray until you get the result. You want to marry a good wife? Yes, there's Facebook. Yes, there's friends. But don't trust too much. The gadgets that we now have, I would rather trust more than this. Because you are going to go a long journey in the unknown world of the marriage life. The same men who might be a sweetie today might end up being a salty one of the days. Souring up your life. So you have to pray. 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 Amen. If divine healing is promised in the Bible and I'm sick, I'll stay there until God gives it to me. Because it's a promise. God promised I would forsake the world. He would give me the Holy Spirit. I will stay right there till he gives it to me because he promised it. We have got the youths in different churches. Our assembly as well. When you talk about the Holy Ghost, they think about it. Amen. When maybe you go through series on receiving the Holy Ghost, they think about it seriously. After that, that's all. But I remember when I was looking for the Holy Ghost, it was a serious business. Amen. We restored pledges that we had taken by the wrong means. Amen. I remember one time I bought books from a certain school, a certain librarian selling books. You want this book? I can give it to you at a certain charge, discounted. It won't be like, you know, the actual price of the book in the shops. Blend of them. Use them to read and everything. But one day, a preacher came some, uh, some years back in Mutari, preaching it, preaching it, preaching. I thought about it seriously. He said, restore the pledge. Reading Ezekiel 33. You know. Restore the pledge. He said, what pledge? What pledge? I remembered that I had plenty of books that I had bought illegally. It was like a benefit, but a wrong one. And now, I had to make a decision. I want the Holy Ghost, but there are plenty of books. I would say, praise God, it would never give me a joy. Yeah. Amen. I would jump, rejoice yeah. as the messages were going on, yeah. but it would not give me a joy. I would yeah. not rest. Yeah. Something would keep on telling me, yeah. I needed this thing. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. Ah. But how was I going to get it? Yeah. With a lot of other things around. Yeah. I made up my mind. To be sued or not to be sued, yeah. I made a decision. Yeah. Counted all those books, placed them in a cardboard box, yeah. and sent someone yeah. to post the books. Yeah. Wrote a letter to the school, to the headmaster. Yeah. I bought these books through this librarian here, yeah. but I'm born again. I am a Christian, yeah. and I now know that it was wrong to do that. Here is your package of books. I want to go to heaven in the morning. I was waiting for the next move, which was going to involve maybe myself being bundled up into a prison cell. No one came. Even this day, no one has come. Amen. You steal a cell phone 
in some shop yeah. you hear about this message yeah. and you hear the Holy Ghost yeah. being preached about yeah. and you wonder why you can't receive the Holy Spirit yeah. you still have your stolen cell phone yeah. amen even though you are a Christian yeah. you go back to Ezekiel 33 yeah. and you go back to Luke 19 the account of Zacchaeus yeah. amen when the Lord said, I will come to your house. Zacchaeus said, Lord, what I, whatever I have taken wrongfully, I am going to restore fourfold, which was the law of restoration. Amen. He had to restore the pledge. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, this day, salvation has come to your house. Amen. Do you want to be saved? Amen. Do you want to receive the Holy Spirit? Amen. Restore the pledge. Amen. That's the type of Christianity that I know. Where Christians have to take back. Where Christians have to confess your wrong. If you have done something wrong to somebody, go back and make right. Then God will meet with you. Look at a man by the name of Philemon and Onesimus who was working for Philemon. And one time Onesimus was sent to prison and there he met Paul. He was he was saved. And now was a fruitful yeah. brother yeah. to Paul. Yeah. But he told Paul this part. Yeah. And Paul said, Onesimus, yeah. it's not enough. Yeah. You go back to Philemon yeah. to straighten up what you did wrong. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things are swept under the carpet. Yeah. Do you want to go to heaven? Yeah. Do you want to be born again? Yeah. We are not here to play church. This is serious business. Amen. If you are not serious about your Christianity, forget about the Holy Spirit. And forget about the rapture. So why are you saying things like that? When you were talking about predestination, that's what predestination does. There is no predestination that will say you sweep, you sweep things under the carpet. No. Clean up your lives. Amen. Confess your wrong. Do the right thing. Live right. Do right. Think right. Amen. Don't worry about me. I'm flying back tomorrow. So I won't be here to worry. <laughs> I may not be here for too long. So I'll just preach and go. Amen. No, this is just to keep you awake. But, look at it seriously. We need to be serious about things. You know, Abraham had the Hagar story. He's maybe the time that he spent in Egypt. Here in the great statements there. But there came a time that God said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou Perfect. In other words, we've played church enough. But we are crossing over. This is the changeover period. Amen. One of the mornings will fly away into the rapture of the saints. Where will you be? Amen. Look at men. Okay, let's just finish off on the Onesimus story. So Paul wrote a letter on behalf of Onesimus to Philemon. Says, now Philemon is now a brother. But whatever he wronged you, and whatever he owes you, you put it on my account. In other words, there is harmony between Onesimus 
and Philemon as a brother in the same church. Amen. You owe someone money, you don't pay it back. Borrow money, you don't pay it back. Sit in the same church, take communion together. Someone is aggrieved in his heart because of your actions. Am I making this Sunday a poor Sunday to you? So there was harmony restored between Onesimus and Philemon. Amen. Look at the disciples. It wasn't just the question of the day of Pentecost coming for them to be in the upper chamber. Amen. In order to get oneness, I think there was time that they they had to talk it over. Amen. Talk it over. Husband and wife, we want to go to heaven together. Talk it over. Children and parents, talk it over. Amen. I'm wrong here. I've done this wrong. And you look at it, confession is becoming something that's so far-fetched. Amen. You come to church to confess your wrongs. Because you're saying, Lord, I don't want to come here full. I empty myself out so that you can fill me with your love. Fill me with the correct joy. Fill me with the correct experience. Others will just end up being like any other denomination of believers. We are here so that when we gather as believers, we ought to see results. We ought to see people getting healed. In the message adoption, Brother Branham commenting on the scene of uh, It's not, it was Akan, yes. The scene of Akan who took a Babylonian garment during the time of Joshua. Joshua was under a promise. Wherever your feet will step, I've given you. It's yours. It's your promise. No man is going to stand before you. And they lost 36 men. Because one man had stepped out of track. It resulted in the death of 36 innocent warriors. Joshua said, we're going to call for a solemn assembly. Let's be serious. Let's be on serious business. Amen. Let's confess our wrongs. What has gone wrong? Why are we losing people? Why are we not winning the battle? And they cast the locks. It was their way of finding out things that time. And the Lord fell on Achan's house. Amen. And he said, son, what have you done? He said, no, I'm sorry, it's me. I took a Babylonian garment and hid it in my tent. And Joshua said, you go find out. If the, tent, if the Babylonian garment is there, take it, bring it. He said, okay, you're sorry, but this is not the time to be sorry. You had the time to be sorry. You did not confess that, that sin. Go back to the book of Genesis. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will not always strive with men. Which means we should be very careful that one day we won't be able to cross the line. Amen. While we still have a chance, let us look for God. Let us look for his mess. While he can still answer. Amen. Let us take advantage of that. Living the right type of life. What if you crash? Get involved in an accident and die in your condition. Where will you be? What if your heart stops beating? With so many plans, so many expectations, I have got them too. My heart can stop any minute. What then? Said everyone else, come. 
We're going to stone Akan. Yeah. We're going to stone his wife. Yeah. Amen. Ah. Everything else that they had. Yeah. Brother Branham says, you cause someone yeah. to bitterly fail. Yeah. And he actually says, you Branham Tabernacle. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Which means the assembly of believers yeah. following the messages. Yeah. The things that we leave undone. The sins that we live and confess. Amen. We can cause the church to fail. We want the victory much. It's not there. Amen. We want miracles in the church. They're not there. I said, oh brother, are you coming from church where there's so many miracles? No. Amen. And this is why I'm saying it. And this is how I say it even at home. Because we want to see God. Amen. We want to see him. And not that I am a champion. I also, got, I also want God to help me. Because together we want to make it. Yes. Together we want to make it. So as I say this, I'm saying, Lord, help me too. Yes. If there be anything flimsy in my life, you know, a lifestyle, an unclean, an unhygienic life around your Christianity, amen, Things that are just left hanging. Flimsy. Loose. We ought to tighten up things. God is serious. The Holy Spirit is serious. And we ought to be serious too. Amen. I don't know why. Uh, I'm saying this. This has nothing to do with what I have here. And I don't know why. I have allowed myself to stray like this. You may say, you were talking about restoring. What then happened? It wasn't only that. There were people I knew I had wronged. And there came a time That Pastor Chikos was preaching hard sermons. Yeah. And people were confessing. Yeah. And I thought about something. Yeah. Someone whom I had maybe spoken evil about. Yeah. And I wondered how I was going to get that person. Yeah. Because that thing would just remain audible. An audible voice. You have to confess this. Get this over. Make it right here. But God is so careful. I mean, he's, he's so mindful of our lives. I was going to go one way. Something said go this way. I went that way. And who do I meet? That person. Said, by the way, I want to talk to you about something. 
You know, I had no time to just check on the affairs, exchange, how are you here, and how, how are things going on? Remember, I had not seen that person for a long time. Said, by the way, I was actually looking for you. Yeah. You remember this? What? This incident, I was wrong. Can you forgive me? Yeah. I am a Christian. Amen. I want to be born again. Amen. The person didn't even understand, yeah. but I, have, I would have done my part. There was someone else. I wrote, I'd lied to. Yeah. Might think, oh, lying, what is it? It's just nothing. And it's just like common things. We just lie, just yeah. say a wrong statement, and we carry on, lie to our children. We yeah. carry on. Yeah. Amen. Hey. Said, how am I going to talk to this person? Said, no. That time we used to have uh, the postal services. I wrote a letter. Remember on this day, this, this, this happened. That was wrong. I am now a born again Christian. I thought I would just make this statement right. The person replied, quoted a scripture, I think in Isaiah 43, verse number 10. You know. And after that, cleaning up and cleaning up, cleaning up and cleaning up. It was so easy yeah. to pray Amen. for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Why do we need the Holy Ghost? Yeah. One day we have to meet the maker. Yeah. And in Romans chapter 8, yeah. the Bible says without his spirit, yeah. we are none of his. Yeah. And why do we bask in the comfort. Yeah. Two years, you haven't received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Ten years, you haven't received the Holy Spirit. Twenty years, yeah. you haven't had any experience. Oh, Why? Yeah. The Bible says, or oh, Brother Branham says, heaven is full. Yeah. What is your take? What is your approach? Yeah. There was a man Brother Branham calls him Gabriel. His wife was a believer, but he wasn't. And here and there he would attend church, some denomination or something. Then he hunted with that pastor one time. And him being a poor hunter, he shot game. And as they were going home, the sun was setting. He saw the golden crust of the sun, of the setting sun. And he thought about his life. Yeah. That one day, his life is setting to. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He looked at what God had done. How God was faithful to his life. Yeah. Blessings. And even on this particular hunt, yeah. he had game yeah. when he was a poor shot. Yeah. He started crying. Yeah. Something was working in his heart. Yeah. And the pastor looked behind he said, Gab, for Gabriel, yeah. what makes you cry? Yeah. Are you thinking about the songs that the choir sings? He said, yes, pastor, I may think about the songs, but it's not the songs at this time. Yeah. They sing well, the choir sings well, but it's not the choir this time. He says, oh, what then? Are you thinking about the sermons that I preach? Has any of the sermons touched you? He said, Pastor, you preach so well. But it's not your sermons. But I'm thinking of what God has done. He was talking about breaking that pumpkin, that Easter pumpkin. Christ, the body, broken for you. Have you ever thought seriously about him? What he has done for you how he suffered for your life so that you should be here today. Children, you're having parents, amen, who are Christians, who are sending you to school when others haven't got. The children, young people who are street kids, maybe you might not have street kids here in South Africa, 
But in Zimbabwe, we've got plenty. He was talking about a blind being led by a child. Yeah. Have you ever thought, you young children, yeah. that you could be leading your dad? Yeah. You could be leading your father that way. Yeah. Born from a parent or from both parents who could be blind. Yeah. But you are privileged yeah. to have parents who are doing everything for you. Amen. Yeah. And why not hunger for the Holy Ghost? Why won't you be serious about saving Christ? Young boys who are cheating, girls who are cheating, and coming to church. Sorry, I'm not talking about you here. But I'm talking about the experiences that we generally facing at home. In other words, we're now having prostitutes in the church. who sing, shout, yeah. and do everything. Yeah. And yet living sinful. Yeah. What has gone wrong? Yeah. Doesn't the blood yeah. have any power anymore? Yeah. Ah. Is Christ not able to save any longer? It's our attitude towards Calvary. The power is still sufficient. The Holy Ghost is still sufficient. The blood still has power, redemptive power. If you want to be saved, you can be saved. It's not a question of we seeing you. Oh, I've attended church. So what? Yeah. Every day I'll be there. Yeah. So what? Mm. It's good. You ought to do that. Yeah. Bible says forsaking not. They are assembling together of the saints. Yeah. But you ought to step up higher. Yeah. Go a step higher. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We want a revival. Yeah. We want the joy of our salvation. Yeah. We want the power back in the church in our lives. Not even here. In your own life. The Holy Ghost was not only given to the pastor or the deacons. It was given to you too. So that you can profit by it. Amen. We ought to live honest lives. And I remember Brother Branham was saying, teach your children to own up. In other words, to say the truth. Amen. To say the truth. Teach your children to say the truth. And we ought to be the examples of speaking truth. In our homes, let's speak the truth. Let's live right. Let's be found doing the right thing so that our children have got good examples. I was hearing an account of certain children who were saying, Daddy, your church, amen, your church, which means they are not a part of it. Daddy has got his church. We're going to daddy's church. Yeah. We're going to mama's church. Yeah. Your church. Amen. We want the children to be a part yeah. of the group. Yeah. For we wouldn't want to leave any hoof behind. Yeah. But we want to go with our children. Yeah. But let's be the rightful examples. Yeah. Husband and wife. Yeah. Talk things over. Clear up on grievances. So that when we come to communion, we are not having communion, but when we come to communion, we are honest. 
We're taking it rightly. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Brother Branham says, you know, clear up the pipes yes. so that there is no hindrance. Yes. Make friends with God yes. so that whenever you are in trouble, yes. it's easy for you to approach him. Yes. Because you, you, are with, you are friends with him. Yes. Amen. It was so easy later on to pray for the Holy Ghost. Remember, it's a Holy Ghost, not a dirty ghost. If human beings are reasonable enough to put water here, clean water, in a clean vessel, how about the clean Holy Ghost? Can it come in a dirty vessel? You answer that. Amen. Can the Holy Ghost come in a dirty vessel? Amen. Ah, I'll just end here. May the Lord bless you. Maybe one of the days if ever I'll pass through I will preach. Amen. Amen. And encourage each other. Talk about the wonderful things. And I will finish my story. Amen. About your work being rewarded. Maybe there is someone who is saying, Lord, I need you. Or there could be someone who has done wrong. And this is the chance. We are not here for your friends. We are not here to see each other. You are not here for your husband or for your wife or for your children, you're here for yourself. If you know in your life that you're doing something wrong, something that you ought not to be doing, this is the whole essence of coming to church. We're coming to clean up. We're coming to ask God for help. We're coming that the Lord will start with us. Lord, give me the hunger in the thirst for the Holy Ghost I will not rest until old Gabriel that story brother Branham goes on to state the story and say the pastor said is it my sermon he said no but I see the sun is setting says, Pastor, tomorrow I'm going to be sitting with my wife in your church. I'm coming to church. And when I do that, I'm going to be the first person to be on the altar praying for the Holy Ghost. No one preached a sermon to him about the Holy Ghost. He knew he needed that. said, I'll be the first one on the altar. And he went on to say, I'm not going to leave the altar until God fills me where people today with a hunger and a thirst for the Holy Ghost which is something needful in your life yes the other things are needful but this is needful in your life how are you approaching it why John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. How about you? You have got lots of space. Amen. John didn't have any sermon from anyone. Think about this seriously. I'm going to invite you to bow your heads. Let's just bow our heads. Is there anyone who is saying, Lord, maybe I've been messing up on certain things. But I want you to help me. You are free to 
come over on the altar. If you know you've been doing wrong and living wrong, I'm going to invite you to come. remember me. Lord, help me. Lord, just this one more time. I come just like Samson. Samson had come to the end of the road. to die with the enemy. In order to find favor with God. I call for the last time. Will there be anyone else? We say, Lord, I am. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you very much, sister.
But whilst they are working there, they take things that don't belong to them. They steal plates, they steal food, and they bring it home and even feed children with the stolen food. This is what the pastor is preaching about here. To say our deeds can hinder or make someone fail this money. And while this message has been preached before us, it's a time to repent. It's a time to take those plates back to where you stole them. Those spoons, those things that you took sometimes blankets, sometimes clothes and you bring them home and they don't belong to you they belong to the person who had employed you I believe it's time to repent Amen it's about lies oh the generation of believers that we are we can lie and we never repent and do you know that the lies that you lie are in hindrance to your blessings. It might be a white lie. Brother Bram speaks about white lies. And those white lies, Brother Bram says, even Legion, he started with a white lie. And that white lie ended up with him in the graveyard with a multitude, with a legion of demons. Our believers today lie a lot. We don't speak the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Even when we borrow one another, we don't pay back. Like the pastor was praying, we ought to pay back. If you have borrowed someone, you owe someone money. Don't you have a strong character that makes you fail to pay back that person his money? You ought to pay back. If you owe someone, pay back. Amen. Hallelujah all things that we do that we are not faithful in they will come back to us as an hindrance to our blessings so to this afternoon whilst we are here and the Holy Ghost has spoken to us diverted the pastor from his sermon sure we are expecting to be blessed we are expecting to hear the rewards of our work but the sermon turned into rebuking us I believe we can't get rewards for our work unless we repent and unless we make our lives right. It's wrong to give a call to a brother and say, brother, can you borrow me a thousand rand? I'll pay you on Friday. Friday comes, you are quiet. Two years, you have not paid back. Ten years, you have not paid back. Those things, they hinder us. Amen. So this afternoon, as these have come here, if someone else wants to come to the altar and pray again, I'm sure Pastor Manza, from what I heard, or uh, a brother, a brave Chiquira, and brother Patrick who preached during the Easter meetings, they also spoke of these things that the pastor is repeating to us tonight or this afternoon. It means there's something wrong with us. Amen. The Holy Ghost cannot come to church to play with us. There's something seriously wrong with us. We have to repent this afternoon. We have to give our lives to Jesus Christ. We have to make right of our lives. Brother, sister, don't sit in the bench knowing that you have evil things that you are doing. You have things that you have not repented. You have unconfessed the sins right there. And because of shame, because you are ashamed of how people, what people will say, let me tell you, if you are ashamed today, then God will be ashamed of you on the day of judgment. You better walk right now whilst the grace and mercy is still upon us. Because when you hear the gospel being preached, it means there is still grace upon us. Because he's still calling us to repentance. Hallelujah! Amen. Wherever you are this afternoon, come to the altar. Repent. Repent. You need Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we sing, pass me not my savior. I just want to give you time to ponder about what was being preached here. And if it is still nagging on your soul, maybe we never taught you right. If you feel a nag on your soul, and God brings a remembrance to the things that you have done, it's a sign that the Holy Ghost wants you on the altar to repent.
So don't try to make another way. Walk to the old and kneel on the old and say, Lord, here I am. Like the pastor was preaching, he was saying, I'm not a champion. I'm also not a champion. I also say, Lord, help me. Wherever you are, walk to them. And this thing of talking evil against one another, the Holy Ghost through the pastor has mentioned it. I see a deliberate refusal to repentance. Because in our homes, we sit and we eat meals, speaking evil of one another. And we come and we take communion without saying, sorry, my brother, I was speaking evil about you. Sorry, my sister, I was speaking evil about you. That's not Christianity. Speaking evil about someone calls you to repent. And how do you repent? You go and ask for forgiveness from the person that you spoke evil against. So this afternoon, the Holy Ghost has spoken to us. Don't make it a light thing to speak evil against a believer and you stay at home and you come to church and you pretend to smile at them when you know deep down in your heart there is a black spot about that brother. You are a hindrance to the movement of the Holy Spirit in church. You are a hindrance to someone who is seeking healing in the church. You are a hindrance to someone who is possessed by a demon that needs to be casted out in the church. You are an archon who has taken a Babylonian garment and hid in the tent of your heart by not confessing. This night, don't take pride. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor Chingore from Maputo, can you come and say a word of prayer and pray that we might live clean lives before God because God desires clean people. Hallelujah. Graça, Senhor, pedimos o Altíssimo Deus para que venha e toque a eles, Senhor. Pai, se houver alguma ofensa que fizeram, que eles sejam perdoados. Se, Pai Celestial, algum pedido especial, que eles sejam concedidos, Senhor. Oh, querido Deus, se houver alguma enfermidade, que eles sejam curados, porque Tu é aquele que vive para todos sempre. 
e curas todas as nossas enfermidades. Obrigado, Senhor, por esta tarde. Obrigado, Senhor, pela pregação do Evangelho completo. Através do nosso amado pastor, Pai Celestial, estamos aqui rendidos, estamos aqui tocados. Não há expressão, senão convidarmos ao Eterno Senhor, o Espírito Santo, que venha e possa, Pai Celestial, tocar a cada um. Te agradecemos, Senhor, nesta tarde. Encomendamos tudo nas Tuas mãos. No nome do Altíssimo Senhor Jesus Cristo, nosso Deus, pedimos assim. Amém. Sometimes low, sometimes jumping up, sometimes sitting down. 
it's not always that we need to crowd the altar shouting hallelujah because we are receiving cars hallelujah because we are receiving houses we need this old time gospel to correct us to put us in line to make our lives right because these are the things that hinder our lives if we have sins and confessed and we just go on and on and on God will cut off that's what brother Brown says God will cut off the line of blessings and we will miss our blessings really appreciate our precious pastor uh, Pastor Jani uh, for a wonderful sermon reminding us that it is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ a wonderful singing from, our, from the saints Mozambique and Zimbabwe God bless you richly Amen we also want to appreciate our precious pastor Amen Pastor Msoso from Dangamvura in Mdar Amen for this wonderful and sobering message praise God how many will say the Lord pastor I just want to see you to look at the hands of the people how many will say the Lord spoke to me personally amen pastor see that's why the Holy Ghost moved to you from your sermon to speak to us in the manner that he spoke this afternoon can we give a clapping offering to the Lord hallelujah precious Lord did use our precious pastor to speak to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Sure, we are enjoying the way that uh, Brother Wooton combined with the brothers here in New, but it will be difficult. He must, he has a new wife, and uh, we were not supposed to yoke him. The Bible says, uh, Hallelujah, they were not allowed to go to the farm <laughs> until after one year, even to war. But uh, we, we love uh, the brother and the music that they play. Amen. If you feel, not if you feel, you've got some some gift for them. Amen. Hallelujah. I know money is a problem with the believers. But if you have got a gift for them, just to say, ah, brother, I, though, though I don't believe 20 rand is a good amount of money, but I'll just say so that I, because I'm on the pulpit. Amen. Brother, this is 20 rand whilst you're going with your beautiful wife don't don't go around and 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 with a with a dry mouth amen just buy a drink hallelujah amen you know preparing for wedding is very expensive is that right amen <laughs> i have less amens maybe because you are convicted of the weight let me believe that but feel free to go behind my back and say ah brother he is a hundred rand passed by KFC. Here is, a, here is 2,000 rand. Hallelujah. Here is 20,000 rand. You are welcome to do that. God bless you richly. Amen. Maybe we can just try to sing a dismissal song uh, as we uh, leave. We really appreciate, Pastor. Thank you for even coming to our church. These are old timers. Maybe 40 years ago, they could have gone to any other church, but they just chose to come to us. Don't you feel privileged? Amen. The pastor could have gone elsewhere. Brother Danny could have gone elsewhere. The new couple could have gone elsewhere. But they came to us. We really appreciate you. God bless you richly. If we come to Mozambique, we'll come to your church. And we'll also sit and enjoy ourselves. God bless you richly. Hallelujah. Maybe let's try to sing Precious Hiding Place. Before I end over to the, to the song. We, we, I knew late that some people or our precious pastor was saying I don't get all the words we should have maybe had a, a Portuguese interpreter uh, but uh, I learned it late I'm sorry for that pastor and all if there's anyone else who was not hearing all the words in English and would have wanted interpretation to Portuguese please forgive me I did not think about it earlier Amen um, I'm sure Sister Mshanga uh, ex excused herself for Friday and, and Sunday uh, because uh, she traveled to Port Elizabeth Amen by aeroplane Hallelujah for the first time so we need to clap hands uh, don't be jealous <laughs> Hallelujah Amen we really appreciate that God bless you, Rish. There is a 
Choco 